Hey, Mike, are you here? I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can't see you, though. Can we get your camera started? Yeah. I think we are live. Sorry, guys, we make virtual instruments. We don't live stream to YouTube very often. <laughs> I am. Um... Oh, we had you for a minute there. I I can hear you a little bit. Maybe turn up your mic. Keep talking. Oh, testing, testing. Oh, uh, there you go. Cool. Very, very good. All right. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everyone's watching us struggle here. I know. Right? <laughs> this is like, don't what you know, we we decide to do these things like last minute. Uh we're 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 too busy uh making sample libraries. Yeah, we're doing our we're doing our very best. <laughs> hey, I like your uh, museo right. on the computer background. That's super cool. Okay, so we're here to talk about museo and what's inside of it, specifically Musio 1. So for those of you who don't know, Musio started off as a subscription service and we offered annual and we offered monthly and we did a lifetime offer and all that stuff. And we've tried to keep it as simple and clear and clean as possible. Uh, one of the reasons behind that was we wanted everyone who uses Musio to be able to use Musio with everyone. Uh, that's kind of been the the guiding light. We didn't want to do some bronze, silver, gold tiered service where some people got this and other people got that and they couldn't really collaborate. We wanted Musio to always just be Musio. So we're we're coming up on that. We're trying to keep that really clean, but we created this product called Musio One. And Musio One is really cool because it's a purchase and you get it. It's a perpetual license, basically. And um, it's been received really well. We're so happy for everyone who's jumped on and bought that product. Thank you for participating and for helping us clarify anything that might have been, you know, messy online. But we've been trying to answer questions and bring some clarity to the situation. So this live stream is very, very simple. We want to say this is what Museo One is. This is exactly what it includes. And maybe just talk about some of the differences between the subscription service and the perpetual product Museo One. So with that being said, uh, Mike, is there anything you want to tee up before we literally just go to our website and show them exactly what's in Museo One? Um, our our amazing marketing team and specifically Brian created this web page where you can see Museo One and literally everything that will be in Museo One, um, you know, but right now and by the time it's complete. Uh, so we'll do that in a bit. But before we do that, Mike, you want to say anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you you stated it pretty clearly. You know, I we want to make sure that there's options for everybody. Uh, you know, we've had a perpetual option for almost nine months now. Yeah. So, right. Like, uh, and the subscription has always been the option for other people like that, you know, that can't afford, uh, three or $400 for, yeah. uh, you know, a perpetual thing. So, um, it's always, that's just what we're doing here. And also like, uh, this time in 2023, I think if you're smart, you want to be able to adapt and figure out what's going on in the like the market. Yeah. And so we kind of have these options out there and we just are really testing to see what people actually really gravitate towards. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the motivation behind it. But yeah. Uh, yeah. anyway, yeah, giving, giving I, options I is always a good thing to do uh, and yeah. not just go all in on one thing because I think, especially in the music world, um, yeah, we've seen other companies try to do that, where they just say, we're going this direction with the pricing. Uh, and you get yourself in some trouble if you do that. Yeah. And I think it really comes down to just bringing access to as many people as we can. I mean, yeah, we want to test out and see what the market wants and what's the best for the company and all that stuff. But there's a lot of people who don't have $400 of walking around money and they'll never be able to afford a product, you know, where that we package so much uh, content and so many instruments into. Yeah. And other people just want to own absolutely everything and they don't care about a subscription. They just want to know that they know that they have it. 
but mostly we're trying to think about everybody from the professional person who can drop 10 grand a month on, you know, music gear and virtual instruments and the student who's just struggling to, you know, make rent and buy books and get gas, you know, in their car. And we're trying to provide a, an option for everybody, but uh, mostly this is about Museo One. So let's talk about Museo One. And let's just uh, state one of those, one of the very clear things. If you want to know exactly what's in Museo One, go to our website. And I'm going to go to it right now. Maybe I should just stream this uh, as I do it. But I'm going to go to museo.com here. Let me share my screen real quick, just so that we can be super, super clear. Okay, so I'm going to share. This is this is Musio on Google Chrome. <laughs> uh, pay no attention to my many tabs and my attempts at getting Zoom started. <laughs> uh, all right, so if you go here, you'll see just a really beautiful website that again our marketing team put together. Lots of videos and things and stuff that you should watch and really great information. But right here at this my top stupid box, face, yeah. Yeah, your, your big face. <laughs> That's a great video, by the way. You should yeah, yeah. go watch that. Uh, yeah. Um, but here, if you look at our catalog, you can see on the on the top bar here exactly what's in our catalog, and you can actually live browse it. This is interactive. So if you want to go through and click on and see what's in Drums of War three, you can actually go through and scroll through every single instrument that's included in Drums of War three and click preview and hear those instruments. So if you're ever worried about or wondering what's live in Museo today, this is the place to go. Look, listen, and you can also just download Museo and for free for 30 days and try anything you want. So that's another bonus. Now, this what's included button, if you click on what's included, this is a dedicated page for Museo One. It has all the information that you'll ever need. It has all the promo information that you'll ever need. And it has this big, beautiful list with all of these wonderful covers that um, one of our designers, Maddie, created and put together along with Santiago and myself. And you can just browse and see exactly what's in the product Museo One. Now, this is what's going to be in Museo One, period. Now, we might go a little bit past 2023. We're, we're still working on a couple of the libraries that we've promised this year. And we want to make sure that's included in Museo One so nobody feels uh, you know, left out or gypped and we don't want to be dishonest. So this is what's included. There are some things in this list that are not currently live, but they will be live very soon. We're working very hard to get them. But this is the list, full stop. There's no extras. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, yeah, and the only thing that's not live yet, Shane, is just with the things with the little red circle on it. Correct. Those are the things that are coming soon. As a matter of fact, we got to change because Taylor Davis is now live as of today. As of today, yes. And Keyboard in Blue is now live. So, Brian, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. change the website. And um, um, I've, I've already seen some questions about, you know, updates on certain products, and I can absolutely give those to you in a little bit. But I just want to put a pin in this. This is the web page. This is where you go. It's, yeah. you know, museo.com slash what's dash included <laughs> or just museo.com. And on the top bar, just click what's included. And this is what's in Museo One. So that should hopefully clear some things up. Yeah. And, um, and let me just say it like this, just to be so clear for 300 bucks. You get everything on that page yeah. forever and never pay us another penny. Yeah. No subscription. No subscription. No subscription. And let's make sure that this is also clear. All engine updates in Museo. So if we add a feature like uh, adaptive legato, if we do time stretching, stretching and pitch bending, when we add multi-mic positions in the next quarter, all these things that will be included in this purchase. Everyone who owns the Museo engine will get the updates perpetually. That's what we've Yeah, seen. and that's actually at the bottom of the page as well, I think. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, all this stuff that's coming soon, all the our effects, all effects of our- Effects and the multi-mics, that's all included, even though, right? Yeah, I mean, and key switches is already in, so obviously you get all, right. everyone gets that. Yeah, so. we still get questions for about that every once in a while, but if you just go and try it free for 30 days, you will find <laughs> that there are tons of key switch patches and we're we're continually adding them uh, as we can get through the list. I think Santiago, one of our, our, our lead developer, is he added like the last big batch. Uh, it's either in beta or going live within the next week or something like that. So anything that you missed from the first large batch that we did, key switches are like coming in and we're just gonna get more creative and more adaptive with them with more options as we move forward. 
Um, but that's that's what it is. So I can't I I don't think I have to say this out loud, but I think I should. This is the most insane deal anyone has ever made available for the public. And that's not because I work for this company. That's because I can look at what each one of these collections is worth and still think that $300, it's it's literally pennies, guys. Let me just scroll up here for a moment. Mike, how much would you sell <laughs> Cinebrass Core for? <laughs> $3.99? Yeah, that's a, that's a well... <sighs> Yeah, it's like that's a four hundred dollar library. And by the way, yeah. you know, if you were to compare the contact versions to the museo versions, you'll find them to be audibly nearly uh, identical. Yeah, because all the samples exactly. are exactly the same. If you dig under the hood, all yeah. of the sample content is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, it's just the interface that's different. Yeah, these are not uh, like and, and I, of these it, libraries. Yeah, so and that's where the value of these instruments come from. It's the recorded content and yeah. the you know sixteen years of you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recording hours, possibly thousands. I don't know. Uh, yeah. And hundreds of thousands it, it, of dollars of investment. It, it, yeah. To, to record players. all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you know, each one of these could be anywhere from 99 to $400 each, each. each. Um, yeah. And we're, I mean, this uh, is you know, all of Cineperk. This is not like a joke. All of Cineperk, which is a $700 library. Um, it's, it's right here. It's it's right yeah. here. It's so amazing. And so streamlined. And there's there's stuff for everybody. I, I was on a forum on Facebook the other day and you know a guy was looking for just an an altogether solution. I need to do some sound design and I also need some orchestral stuff and I also need some singer-songwriter. It's all here. Collision, soundscapes, organ, Hollywood winds, hard on your fiddle, three choir libraries, you know tons of pianos, amazing strings, like multiple orchestras with brass from Fox and Sony stages. It's mm -hmm. all included in Museo One. So if you're not a subscriber, if you're not a person that that really likes that whole mode, Museo One is an amazing product. Um, it has everything that you need to get started. Something like this is just, it's unprecedented in our industry uh, as, far as, as far as I know. And um, I will say that as we release new content, next year and it's not included in museo one if you have an upcoming project and you really need one of the new instruments if you hear it and say that's perfect for this project that's perfect for this queue subscribe for a month for 10 bucks and and get your audio write it down you know bounce it to audio and be done with it you can you can have access to this stuff so easily and so clear and once we add enough big you know content we'll we'll package all the new stuff up into a museo two um, at that point, Museo 1 users will get an upgrade path, so they'll have a really nice discount to get to Museo 2. And to clarify about Museo 2, Museo 2 will include everything in Museo 1 and then everything that's added. Again, this is for access. We want people who are using Museo to be able to work with other people and collaborate with other people who are using Museo. We're not trying to restrict. We're not trying to gouge you for money. We're not trying to come back to you and, you know, you know, beat the pinata and see how many coins fall out. We really want to make an incredible value for the community because we see the times and it's a crazy election year and like all of these things are happening. And we just want to make sure that people have what they need to make beautiful things and make the world a better place. So I think that's our position. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is good. I, I, hopefully this is clear for everybody. Why don't we just go to the, you know, I think the next question would be from Joseph William Morgan here, um, who says, Hey Mike, we are wondering how pricing works for the future 2024 and beyond instruments that are added. If you purchase Museo one in 2023. And I think you touched on this. Um, yeah. we are, uh, committed to creating a Museo two. And a Museo three, a Museo four. I mean, uh, hopefully that all works out. I think that, but that's what we're planning to do. And then Museo two will contain everything that's in Museo one, plus all the new stuff that we end up recording. We haven't announced anything about what's in Museo two yet. That'll be a next year thing. Um, and it'll be likely, I mean, we have to be careful what we say because we don't know exactly. This is so far in the future, uh, but it will likely be the exact same price as Museo 1. So new people, if they want to wait for Museo 2, that's fine. You get it for the same price. You get all Museo 1 plus Museo 2. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, And then, you know, in far in the future, Museo 7 would contain Museo 1 through 6 and yeah. all the cool stuff in Museo 7, you know? Um, it's and, just, and it's we're, try we're trying to figure out the model to handle 
perpetual licenses for people, right? And also offer it as a subscription. And it's like, there's like a million combinations of ways you can handle this. And this by far was the best one. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I think it hopefully helps. that answers your question. Uh, but then, and then, oh, I didn't say this. If you're somebody who has Museo 1 and you want to get Museo 2 and all the new stuff, there will be, it'll be an upgrade. We have to charge something, uh, but that price will be uh, significantly less from uh, Museo 2. So it's, you know, it'll be, we'll figure something out that's super fair and awesome for people. Exactly. Yeah. You know? But I mean, this really all depends on what we even put in Museo 2. You know, if yeah. we there's a big enough, awesome collection or a couple, you know, to to do Museo 2 a little bit earlier than we thought, maybe we'll make a less expensive upgrade to Museo 2 or something. The cool thing about not having to work with so many third parties to get an instrument built is we actually have decision-making power. <laughs> we have control over this stuff so we can decide what's best for our community, what's best for our customers. And I really do want to underline and highlight Yes, we have to keep lights on. Yes, money has to come in the door. But we're really, really focused on what's the best thing for you guys. What's the best for our users? What's the best for the community? What's the best for the artists that record these uh, instruments? And how do they get paid? And how do we keep this industry afloat and thriving and creative uh, with all of the stuff, you know, that all the challenges that the industry faces going forward? So that's that's really our focus with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I see another comment. Hi, Mike. I'm patiently waiting for Vaches 8. Can you update us on when it will be released? Yes, uh, actually, Daniel Decker. Like, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, you, you can speak to this. We're we're very excited about too. I just I just saw Vochis 8 uh a couple of weeks ago. They're excited yeah. about it too, but you know, we're all we want to make sure it's really, really good. Yeah. And we want to launch it at the right time. So and, and we want to do them me... justice and and to like we want to set like we want to make a nice video about it because it, it was a whole bunch of uh film uh, that we took uh, of the whole session and, uh, and tell people there's a good story to tell behind that uh, absolutely yeah. yeah so the production has been really interesting on this um we recorded at the colburn school and it was a uh, is a very interesting recording day i'll say it like that uh, it was during the week and there were a lot of students and lots of noise issues with the room and i'm not going to get into the technical mumbo jumbo but we had a couple moments there where our mixes just didn't work and the instruments that we had, you know, chopped and built and played, they just weren't up to quality. So we took it back to the drawing board. We went through a brand new set of mixes, a brand new set of denoise passes, a brand new, just a whole engineering workflow. We kind of started from the ground up and I'm, I'm so thrilled and it gives me so much joy and peace <laughs> to say this, but now it sounds freaking awesome. All of those issues are non-existent. We have an incredible uh, set of samples now and they have been cut, they have been exported. We just have to just put the last finishing touches and get it into beta. So Vaches 8 is actually in a really, really good place. I'm not gonna throw a date out because um, we're gonna give it the time in beta to really get through all the tuning and all the massaging that it needs to be perfect, but it's in a great we place. We wanna do it justice for these because these, these are awesome people and they're yeah. incredibly talented uh, musicians. And, yeah. Uh, we, we want them to, to be really happy with the result, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, um, it, that's, that's one thing also, uh, well, creating sample libraries that are choir libraries are, are probably the most difficult thing on earth to do because we all know what the human voice is. So anyone on the street knows what a human voice is supposed to sound like. Yeah. You can fake a, you know, contrabassoon clarinet because you know, maybe not everyone knows what that's supposed to sound like. And you, yeah. you know, but but choir is something you got to be really careful about and go crazy with the the tuning and the legato transitions and blah 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 right absolutely so, there's yeah. so there's just so many details so we we're we're looking for hopefully fingers crossed like looking for something in late December to answer your question but I'm not going to give you like a date because we don't have one we're going to release it absolutely when it's ready and yeah. uh, it will be fantastic yeah Daniel we are uh, going to make you happy. I yeah. know we talked, Daniel says he's a hard person to please, but I, I'm committed to making yeah. Daniel happy. <laughs> and I will say also another cool. piece of exciting news is, you know, the uh, Nordic Voices, Women of the North. Um, it's in beta right now. I've just finished and, and pushed all of the fixes uh, for that library this week. And uh, we're, we're looking for a release in the next few weeks here. And oh my gosh, that library is phenomenal. If you guys like the Men of the North, this is just going to blow your mind. It's got a lot of the same 
those like runic words and all sorts of crazy textures and effects and stuff, but the voices are just gorgeous. These are the same, this is the same choir that recorded on like God of War and um, Vikings and all this stuff. There's not very many singers uh, in Iceland and Iceland just has a very small music community, but they're incredibly talented. So these women have been singing together since some of them were four years old. 12 years old, 15 years old. And now they've all grown up singing together and they're this incredible choir. And oh my gosh, yeah. it shows. We actually have a short video coming out about all of this uh, yeah. pretty soon. It's going to be pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Iceland's a fascinating place. Their total population is 347,000 people, which is smaller right. than the least populous state in the United States. Yeah. But they're it's smaller they're, than Northridge in Los Angeles. The amount Angeles. of musicians there. Yeah. The percentage of musicians is insane. Um. Yeah. But I was talking to my friend about that just the other day who's in Iceland. And he said, because, well, it gets very cold and dark here. So people stay at home and, <laughs> and, they, and they practice, they practice music. their instruments and their voices. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Let's keep them in our thoughts. I, I hear there's volcanoes coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's very keep likely to happen soon. But it's almost like they're they're like used to it. You know, it's like, well, you live there. That's what you get, you know. But no, this sounds pretty, pretty bad. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, good. Let's talk about a couple more questions. Let's get these. Let's get through these. Okay, so Roar Berglund, if I if you get Musio 2 for the same price as one, eventually, wouldn't that make the upgrade from one to two more expensive than waiting for Musio 2? Absolutely. Um, of course. If you are a Musio 1 user today and you pay $300 and then you pay whatever X amount of dollars, 100 bucks to upgrade to Musio 2, you will have paid $400 or whatever for something that somebody who paid Musio 2 directly paid $300 for. But that's with every product and every normal thing. Um, we're not worried about that. The person that bought Musio 1, what they get, what they're paying for, is the value of using Musio 1 for the entire year or whatever or longer before Musio 2 comes out. Um, a lot. I've, I've seen a lot of this kind of question and a lot of this kind of conversation around this thing. What we're doing is actually not all that brand new or exciting when it comes to the model. Think about Complete uh, by Native Instruments. It's up to Complete 14 now, I think. And if you buy Complete 14 today for $4.99 or $3.99, whatever their Black Friday deal is, uh, you will have paid less probably than what I paid for Complete 6 way, way, way back in the day. Uh, that doesn't make me a loser or have, it's not more expensive for me. I got 10 years of Complete and music creation ability. So, I mean, the value of having instruments today is real. So, yeah, of course, when you upgrade, it's going to be more expensive uh, for sure. But that's normal. For our industry and normal for purchasing products so um will the subscription price creep up i think that's the scariest thing about the subscription model that's interesting um we've tried to keep subscription prices down um i, I know we've kind of started a little high and there's a lot of internal debate and we've actually lowered that price and just so you guys know at least my thought process and mike can speak to this separately but i'm not looking to get like a ton of money from one person i'm trying to get a little bit of money from a ton of people so our model for the subscription service is we want 20,000 people, we want 50,000 people, we want 100,000 people buying into Musio, and then it works. You know, that's that's the model. That's how we can keep those prices down. That's how, you know, Netflix can stream for $4.99. <laughs> well, I guess not anymore. They're trying to raise their prices, but we're, we've got all the math. We know how expensive it is to, you know, onboard a user. We know how expensive it is to pay for the cloud costs of them downloading uh, samples and stuff. So we're trying to keep that price as low as possible. We have no intention of of raising subscriptions because that's just not the model. It's not like we're mm -hmm. going to continually gouge. That's why we started Musio One. We wanted a perpetual thing that can bring money in the door for people who want a product and the subscription should be able to pay for itself and give people access. So anything else to add on that, Mike? Yeah, no, that's you. You pretty much. Yeah. So I would say, just... no, I mean, I don't think, yeah, like, yeah, right. Uh, no, there's no intention to raise subscription prices. That we do, we have no plans to do that. No. Uh, with the nature of film music changing to smaller ensembles and sound design, do you have plans to move in those directions with some future releases? Yeah, we actually had some plans years ago to do that, and we actioned them. Uh, check out Quatra String Foundations on Musio. That was specifically with the intention of getting a smaller chamber strings. Um, we're going to be doing a couple more solo instruments, and a lot of our World Series was geared towards this. Uh, we specifically didn't get huge studios and we didn't get big bombastic sounds because we saw that that's absolutely where the sound of cinema is going. And I would also say that there's a little bit of orchestral fatigue out there. 
uh, you can just post on, you know, any forum on Facebook or Reddit and say, what's the best orchestra strings, woodwinds, brass, and you'll get 30,000 recommendations from 28 different styles and people. And they're all good. They're all great. I mean, we yeah. have we have checked the box in our industry for orchestral libraries for a long time, I think. So, yeah, we're definitely focusing on sound design, smaller ensembles, more intimate and more flexible for just the myriad of media and content that's out there being. Created. Yeah, I, I think the future is going to be the, the sort of a world series like capturing. We, we've we've captured these sort of Western classical orchestral film, television, game music samples. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's just for us, there's no value in trying to create another string library because I think we've reached that point of like. Uh, we've maximized what you can possibly do. You know, it's yeah. going to be very incrementally uh, more impressive and it's not worth it. Uh, in my opinion, we'll let some other companies uh, handle that stuff. We'd rather explore more sounds and more timbres and more instruments. Yeah. And there's another, there's a whole world out there. Okay. Yeah. We've, we've captured actually coming up here. We've got a lot of European uh, countries. We've got South Africa. Well, that's good. That's a good start, but like, you know, there's 140 something countries in this planet yeah <laughs> right Let's go for it you know um so that i mean that's a personal dream of mine and uh it would be sweet to just go to and, and Asian countries get say, all that stuff you know yeah asia would be amazing uh, uh yeah and but i mean so, i've been personally inspired so much by just our iceland series hearing the drums hearing the strings hearing the just a different kind of vibe that their whole music culture brings is really amazing. So I think the communities hit it right in the head. They they want they want sounds that set them apart that are not the traditional. Yes, I've heard this uh, again and again. I think we even have people laughing at us every once in a while when we mention it. They're like, "Please don't do another solo violin library. <laughs> we have solo violin libraries, and yeah. you know we yeah. have plans to for for just way more interesting stuff than that." Yeah. You know, I think to do solo libraries or more traditional libraries, what we would want to do is work with artists who bring not just the sound of that instrument, but their own artistic flair that people have really latched on to. Tina Guo plays the cello different than other cello players. That's why her library does so well and people love it so much. Taylor Davis plays the fiddle differently than other people play the fiddle and the violin. So that's why people like that. And that's what we would explore in that area. But otherwise, we're looking for different cool sounds. No. Um, okay. Um, in the update for the player, will you include at some point the infinite bow for Tina Guo and Taylor Davis? Uh, they are already there. Um, again, lots of questions about, you know, the different particular pieces of these libraries. Uh, you can go ahead and browse our catalog online if you don't want to sign up for a trial, but go ahead and sign up for a trial. It's 30 days free. It's a whole month that you can browse and download and play and see exactly if this thing works for you, if it has all the features that you want or you know, whatever. And you can submit feedback directly through the app, even with the trial version. So uh, go check those things out. But yes, yes, sir. They are, they're all in there. Um, you're yeah. welcome for people who are saying thank you. You got it. <laughs> um, I'm glad you're enjoying Musia. That's great. Uh, any scope to add transpose audio control stand? Okay. So let me just have a blanket uh, talk about features and stuff. If you want it, I promise you we've wanted it for like a year. <laughs> We're working as fast as we can to get those features implemented. We're working on download all buttons. We're working on better UX and UI navigation through the thing. We're working on effects. We're working on all the things. We have, we we log all of your requests and we rate them and we rank them and we, yeah. we rate them. We, we we, okay, stuff. listen, Shane, do you want to, okay, listen, do you guys want to see behind the scenes a little bit? But this is, this is a okay, disclaimer. <laughs> this may not happen. Okay. <laughs> so if we show you this stuff, don't reference it on VI control or something saying, where is this thing? These are the, this is how our thought process works. And this is so Shane, Maddie, uh, Harrison and Toby, they all uh, get together and design the interface for what we want to try to do to solve a lot of the questions. Cause we get tons of feedback. Every, everything is red like the in-app feedback. And so we take all of that and apply it. Uh, the guys do this. So do you want to show, why don't you show a little bit of like, um, what you feel comfortable showing Shane? Uh, and, I, I'm comfortable showing everything, I think. So yeah, look, it, I mean, because I I'm not going to, you guys don't know where I live. This so is like, can't. this is how, this is how the team works here. They, they design everything in Figma first, right? Cause it's the yeah. easiest thing to do. You just, yeah. 
and come um, up with ideas and throw it on the board and be like, what's the best place to put this button? And, you know, um, absolutely. So let me just and, talk you through. Yeah, go this. for it. Um, well, this is our new explore page. This uh, is what we are thinking. This doesn't mean this is what's happening. Sorry. I had to say oh. it one more time. <laughs> yeah. But these are the designs for explore. We really want to make it a little bit clearer, a little bit bigger, a little bit more colorful. We want to show you the new stuff. Um, and this is not just because we think it's fun. It's because sometimes we get feedback like, hey, I've been using Museo for months and I didn't know that X, Y, or Z library was released. I didn't get the email or it got lost in the shuffle. So we wanted to make a, you know, a space where there was a little bit more promotion, a little bit more push. Um, yeah. And I think the big uh, one, sorry, Shane, if I keep interrupting you, I'm going to get excited here. You know, a big thing is just being able to just click a button and just see all of the strings, see all of the you know, brass, see all the world instruments kind of in categories, because I think that's something that people have been asking for. Absolutely. When you're setting up your template, it's just easier to do it that way. And you may not care about Cine strings and Quatra and the names of them. You just kind of want to see everything in one place. So that was, you know, having different categories of instruments is huge. So um, we, got this, we got this big navigation flow uh, guy over here, just because we're trying to refigure out search and how that works and what buttons go where and what takes you to which and all sorts of things. And the thing that we're really excited about, even though it will probably look kind of lame right now, is this new catalog top bar where you can set filters and you can have favorites and you can see only the instruments that you have downloaded on your machine. Uh, these are all filters to, to restrict the view of your catalog to only what you want to look at right now. So we are implementing favorites. We are implementing downloads down, you know, only show me downloaded stuff on my computer. Uh, we are implementing. Yeah. So zoom in a little bit there. Um, Here. You know, it's kind of like we're taking inspiration from some of the music streaming services. So we're, uh, we're bringing back the sort of the titles and putting them under each of the tiles. Yeah. So just so it's a little bit clearer to read. Uh, and then as you hover over them, yeah, you'll have that favorite option and you can click play just to hear a demo of just the uh, the collection itself instead of having to navigate into uh, particular instruments. Exactly. So, and uh, then, um, you know, there's all sorts of little things like this. Uh, what gets clicked on double click on and where it takes you all sorts of places. This is still, you know, under construction, but we're we're trying to figure out the best UX and what's expected from you know, people when they're trying to navigate and get between instruments. Yeah, that's the key. That's the, uh, okay. Because I use, I obviously use Museo like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're just looking at the instrument rack itself, it's like, well, I just want to get to the, I want another instrument from that collection. So I should be able to just click the collection. And so that's, exactly. I think that's a huge, it's little things like this that just are, have a massive impact yeah. on, on, workflow. Yeah. on workflow. And create So just be able to make it a clickable thing that brings well. you to the collection. So you can explore the the other you instruments. You have to click three times to load in the next articulation. Right, or just search That's around. Funny. I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of clicking, and so yeah. Um, but you know, more stuff when you're searching. We've got different search uh, filters and things like that. We've really thought through this, and by we, it's it's a committee. You know, it's it's the production team, it's the dev team. We do a show and tell every week or every couple of weeks, and we show the whole team and we get feedback. So. We're all music creators. You know, we're not in a bubble wondering what users want. We're we're users ourselves. And then we take all of your feedback as well and try to action this stuff. So yeah. this is a One lot of, the of things I really like. You know. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yes, good points. One of the things I like that Shane designed and Maddie is like, for example, the Gino Luciani flutes. If you go into that collection, it's like four trillion yeah. <laughs> you know, instruments. <laughs> And there's other there's other collections that are going to be like that. And and how do we handle that? Having a giant list is really unwieldy. So, what if you just were to uh, put them into categories, and then so they'll be separate. So yeah, you've got you've got the you know concert flute, alto flute. There's about forty articulations, clickable every... category, and it will just show those things, right? As a filter, I'm assuming. Yeah, as a filter. So basically, when you click on Gina Luciani currently, there's about forty articulations, thirty five to forty per flute which is a lot. And there's four flutes. So there's like 140, 150, something like that separate items that you can load. And that's crazy. That means that if you've loaded, you know, if you've jumped into the collection, you're going to have to scroll through 40 lines of instruments before you even see that there's an alto flute available after the concert flute. 
Um, I've got a nice big screen here so I can see all that stuff. It's not really a problem for me, but if I'm trying to create on a laptop, I've got a MacBook Air. I mean, that that screen size is drastically smaller. You can only really see maybe up to the top few. So we trying to give uh, some, some catalog options that not only make navigation easier, but also just visibility so that you know what's in these libraries. Um, Industry Brass is another really good example. There's so many patches in Industry Brass that you might miss the little section that we added where it's two trombones and one bass trombone. Such an awesome sounding patch, but it's just one or two. All we did was record sustains for that. So you might miss it in the shuffle of scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through all these different you know, instruments. We wanna make sure that it's really clear what's inside of a collection. So that's kind of the impetus behind these designs. We just want your navigation and your experience to not hinder your creative workflow ever. And um, cool. that's what's going on here. Yeah. So did you, I'm sorry if I, if I missed it, Shane, did you mention sort of the download? Uh, we're, we're very, very careful about how we want to handle download all. Yeah. Um, and why don't okay. we talk a little bit about that? Because one of the and things just, we don't want yeah. to do is just, because as this library grows, it's going to become massive. And yeah. if we offer a download all for everything, it's just not the way Museo is designed well, to work. I'm, I'm going to pause so, you there, Mike, real quick, because yeah. the more and more we talk about it, and actually this last week has been really illuminating. Maddie and I met with Toby and Harrison at, and download all absolutely works. It's actually a feature that our dev team has. Oh, you know, the decision was made about cloud costs and what we really want to do. And I had some hangups about it, but it seems to be that the more and more and more we talk about it and the more we hear from users, we were trying to restrict the download to just a specific instrument. But then, you know, we have such interesting, complicated libraries. How do you split up Drums of War 3 into instruments effectively? And there's all sorts of edge cases. All that to say, we are barreling towards a download all button and the download all button per collection would just be right here. So I don't know if there per is collection. Like, yeah. I, I don't know I, if this, if the crowd is going wild right now, but um, it'd be download gonna, all but, per collection. Yeah. Per collection. That's the key. So, and so be able to look at the library that you want and click a, a button here. That's, that's a download all you click on here and then there will be a button inside where you'll be able to download that whole collection with one click and not worry about going through and individually. Exactly. Yeah, that was right. That was the main issue, right? People, I mean, even so me, I was complaining about it is like having to yeah. click load, 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 load or, or just even the little download icon, Yes. you know, 50 times is uh, not it's fun. Cumbersome. It's not fun. And you don't want to go through all that setup, especially if you're setting up a template or maybe you're setting up Museo for a studio or for a computer lab at your school or for your boss. You know, if you work for a composer and he's like, hey, I got this Museo thing. Can you just set it up for me? We have, you know, created a situation where that poor intern is now experiencing a nightmare of like doom clicking through thousands of, of individual instruments. We want to make that a lot better. So, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be introducing a download all. Uh, to this guy, which is very exciting. You know, we just wanted to make sure that it looked right, that the navigation was right, that we were prepared to handle it. And once we got the thumbs up from the dev team and the design team figured it out, we're we're happy to say we're going to be including a a download all. Um, well, do you want to? Yeah. What else is there? Um, I mean, there's so much that's that's kind of in flux and being designed, and we've got all sorts of notes. If you look carefully down here, Maddie is literally working on this as we speak. You know, she's got new designs coming uh, with all of our notes and all of these kinds of things. But this is just uh, you're seeing the workboard. You know, this is what we sit with every day and make sure it's good. Um, I'm going to stop sharing for just a bit, and I'm going to let's let's answer some more questions, maybe. Um, cool, cool, cool. I don't see any other questions. Uh, um, wow, thanks for the positive comments. I appreciate it. Oh, <laughs> That's well, nice do, to hear once in a while. I do want to answer Ed Rugman. So, enjoying Museo so much, any scope to add transpose audio controls to the interface in Museo to pitch up and down samples for a bit of sound design? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, this is yeah. something that I want as well. Again, it's a, it's a big, there's no small tasks. That's what our, uh, our, our wonderful board member, Doug, always reminds us of. There's no small tasks. So it seems like a small thing, like, hey, just add a transpose. I want to be able to pitch this up and down. It's a big deal. It's a big deal for dev. It's a big deal for design. It's a big deal for marketing. It's a big deal for production. Um, lots of moving parts. But yes, we absolutely want pitching. I, I find myself wanting to pitch things all the time. Um, I can generally do this in my DAW. Ableton Live is my DAW of choice, and it's really, really easy to work uh, 
with stuff like that in Ableton. It's not so easy to do that with like Logic or Pro Tools. Um, so yeah, those those things are definitely on the board. Definitely on the board. Um, let's oh, here, see. let's do this one uh, from Metal Gear. Musio is nice, but is that all you're working on? Uh, <laughs> what about updates to contact libraries UI? My eyes will be grateful. Yeah, um, well, just a quick context. So January of this year, you know, well, last two or three years, we've been focusing on Cine samples and Musio at the same time, creating contact libraries for Cine samples and building a whole new platform and porting instruments to Musio with, with a small team. Um, and what, what we found is actually that made things worse for both scenarios. So we made the risky choice to, in January of this year, to not do new contact instruments for Cine samples and put all of our efforts into Musio. And that's what we kind of were doing the last nine, 11 months. Yeah. Um, in terms of new interfaces for contact, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, well, I'd be curious to know exactly what what uh, what might be asked for and which is, which libraries, which which ones are we talking about? Because one of the things is like it's just we need to decide as a small team what things to focus on. And um, it's likely we might not get around to that. Uh, I will say that. But if there's a huge demand, uh, we'll, of course, do it. Uh, but we haven't seen a lot of people. So what, what's your answer to that, Shane? Am I aligned? With My answer to that is, so there's there's a little bit of confusion. I think some people just want contact because they're comfortable with it, which I totally understand. I get that. Um, a lot of people just like pretty UIs. Um, they like seeing things and that's inspiring for them. Also very much understand that. Um, we're, we're trying to bring a little bit of that over into Musio. You know, we've got some pretty looking UIs and some graphics going on there. Uh, but mostly I think the core of it is people want all of the functions that they feel that they need. Um, now I'm going to be super honest here in the past, Cine samples has a habit of adding functions to libraries that, that I think we all agree are just extra. They're very fluff. They, they really do not matter for music creation. Um, I think one of the, I mean, Steve is going to disagree with me. Steve is our product expert, but he's going to disagree with me here. But um, I don't like the hairpin creator in our Cine series. I use my mod wheel for that. I think it's more human and real to, to blend in fades and, you know, dynamic curves and all that different stuff. With the hairpin creator, it's kind of a cool gimmick. It's kind of a cool tool if you want to just set it and have it for a passage. But there's so much scripting involved. There's so much design involved. I had to redesign the hairpin creator for the Sinistrings update. It's not a small amount of work. And at the end of the day, you get 18 people who are like, oh, cool. Love the new design for this thing. I guess I'll check out the hairpin creator. It's not worth the hours and hours and hours and months of development and design and scripting. Yeah, because stuff like that, it takes us away from doing things that are more like future focused. Yeah. You know? And so uh, when I, it's when a danger. It's a it, crazy place to be. Uh, yeah. So when I look um, at it and I look at really useful features, um, there's not that many that Musio doesn't have that contact does have for music creation. So what I would say is an adaptive legato is absolutely uh, important for me. Multi mic positions is super important for me. Um, and then uh, time time stretching and pitch bending is, is really, really important for me. Those three things are really the only thing that I think most people who want contact updates are looking for. Um, there's, there's, there's outliers and we have them cataloged, you know, other people want really complicated, uh, mapping abilities to be able to map to velocity or map to CC and all those different kinds of things. Um, that's more of a preference. It's not like a, can this thing function? Can I switch between one articulation and another? So we're a little bit less concerned about those. Uh, we have bigger priorities, you know, bigger fish to fry before we get there. But generally, I don't know if people want contact. I think they want functionality. And when we've gotten all these tickets and we've gotten all this feedback, um, it's like, yeah, okay, we can distill it and say, yeah, they just want that function. They want these things. Um, yeah. I just saw a new question pop up. Any news on vibrato control? That's another thing like contact has that Musio doesn't. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to be getting that in as soon as we can. Santiago just figured out, uh, he built a little script that did performance legatos and stuff. So we can we can stack articulations now and trigger them in more complex ways. Uh, that will absolutely get us to be able to blend between non-vibrato and vibrato with the wheel. Um, again, we got some pretty big fish to fry before we deal with that. There's no small task. So it's not just like checking a box and saying, I want Musio to have this. We've got to build it from the ground up. 
Um, yeah. I don't know if that's crazy important, um, but it's it's definitely a, a big part of people's workflow. So yeah, I mean, the answer to all these questions is yes, we want to build in functionality. But when we look at if we want to do that in contact anymore, no, I, I don't think we want to do that in contact anymore. As a, as a person who developed contact libraries for a lot of years, it's very, very difficult to do that. It's very, very expensive and it's extraordinarily time consuming. Um, just look at, actually, I'm going to read something uh, to, to people. So this is something that uh, Santiago and I put together the other day. Uh, I don't know if I'm still sharing my screen. I probably shouldn't be because <laughs> I'm going through our DMs right now. But this is just what's gone on this year. So um, in, in the past, just to give you guys context, Cine Samples at their very best released about four products a year. Um, small, maybe like one large one and a couple small ones or mid-sized ones. That's about the peak. Um, this is what we've done with Museo this year. So first, this is the list of new original libraries. And spoiler alert, there are 17 new original libraries just beginning this year. Quattro, Studio Bases, Mr. Rogers Celeste, Hardanger Fiddle, Rhodes, Gina Luciani Cinema Flutes, Industry Brass Pro, Session Upright Piano, The Whirly, Cinestrings Pro. I've already said three flagship libraries, by the way, and I'm not halfway through the, the list. Rhodes Chroma, Arp Quadra, Octocat, PPG Wave 2, Monopoly, OBXA, Oberheim 4, Profit 5, Synergy, World Adventure Iceland, which is just a couple uh, weeks away from release, Women of the North. Uh, the Nordic Voices and Vaches 8 will be all out by the end of the year. That's six flagship libraries, two of which are vocal libraries and two of which are string libraries. These are not simple things. When, when I say that that would have been impossible in contact, it cannot be overstated enough. Not even a quarter of that would have been possible if in contact development. And yeah, it wouldn't have been possible, but <clears throat> yeah, it's not possible that on each one of those. You have to pay. I mean, I love the guys at Native Instruments and they have a great yeah, nothing uh, business model that. and all of that. I never want to say any because it's like we built our business on, on contact and yeah. uh, we're not going to um, we're not going to stop uh, offering contact instruments. But, you know, when you do a new instrument, there's license fees you pay to Native Instruments as a developer for every single one of these products that are can be a five figure number just to get uh, you have to buy the serial codes. Yeah. You know, so every single serial, you know, when you get a you buy a contact library, you get a serial code. That developer had to pay, they could have, they could have paid somewhere between five to twenty dollars just for that code. Um up front. So yeah. that you know, you 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 multiply that by fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, you know, it it gets really uh, expensive. So that's not something, and you gotta pay it up front. And you get a CSV file with all of the codes, and then you deliver those to customers. Yeah. So anyway, I don't mean I like that's it's a really expensive thing. Um that's just one part of it. And then just developing can be really uh, a challenge with KSP and stuff. And uh, finding great KSP programmers is hard. Um, yeah. Most of them have started their own <laughs> sample companies, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's what, that's my thoughts on that. Why don't we, yeah. okay. So Shane, do you want to just like, maybe there's still like a lot of good questions here. Maybe we can kind of just go through them a little really quicker. Quick. Yeah. So for make sure like people uh, feel like they're heard here. Yeah, so for instruments like Hollywood Winds, would it be possible to have runs notated graphically and pop up when you play a key? Uh, we have a lot of ideas about how to give more info about what's mapped to the keys. I don't have designs to show you for that yet, but we have lots of thoughts and a lot of discussion. Uh, we have complicated libraries and every instrument that's worth playing is probably going to be a little complicated, especially when you get to percussion and things like woodwind, you know, runs. So yes, uh, we have we have plans to get a lot more info uh, for our key roll. A lot of that stuff. Uh, is there a yeah. way to download a library at once, not by selecting every single instrument? Not yet, but it's coming. Uh, watch the live stream when we post it, and you can see that I show that. Um, There'll be a download all button. Well, we're looking towards having a download all button for yep. each collection. Yep. That way you don't have to go um, clicking 400 times. Um, so. I saw another one that was about, you know, what about downloads selected with checkboxes? Uh, we will never do that. If you have to check a bunch of boxes and then go and have another click to download, the selected, you should have just downloaded the ones that you checked the box for. So I, I have no no plans to implement that, um, but I like the feedback. This is the kind of iteration that gets our creative gears going. And maybe there's more functions that we add later, you know, about fixing or updating or something like that that could use a checkbox. So certainly it could yeah. be cool, but no plans on that. Uh, 
Here's an interesting idea from Ed Rugman. Uh, for percussion, would it be possible to have descriptions that pop up when you hover over, hover on the keys? Yeah. Explanation of what drums are playing technique, left, right, muted info. Yeah, I, I, that's definitely that's an interesting. Exactly. Idea. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Are we doing that? Are we yeah, about that's it? exactly what we have in mind. That's certainly on the board. So for something like that, we ran into this a lot with Iceland, but any one of our percussion libraries, we have different stuff mapped to different keys, you know, especially for complex instruments like a djembe, there's center and side and rims and slaps and thumbs and palms and open and closed hands, all that stuff. And if you just have a laid out keyboard, you don't really know what that is. It's just different sounds. It'd be really nice to have a text pop up for all that stuff. So uh, yes, we're looking forward to that. We're building that, but it's got to be designed, developed, implemented, all those things. But hopefully coming soon. Yeah, look, in, look for that in 2024. It's pretty important to us. Um, let's keep going. Is the original lifetime... Per okay, as a museum, one question, because that's been our subject anyway. Uh, that's is a great question. The <laughs> yeah. Is the original lifetime purchase and Museo One the same thing, Mark Holland? Uh, no, no. The lifetime purchase, the, the one thing that we offered in April is no longer going to be offered again. That was a one-time thing. We consider the people that that uh, jumped in on that as kind of like partners with us. They're almost kind of like investors in a way, like because they they believed in what we were doing, and we said you can pay this. I think it was four ninety nine. Was it? Yeah. And you get everything in Museo for life, Museo 1, Museo 2, Museo 3, Museo Infinity, uh, yeah, forever. They, all the they took a big chance. And they that's not something we it. can offer because that's, I mean, I don't think any business should offer something like that. That's a, it's a terrible business. Uh, that's not, uh, yeah, we, we, we want to keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's why we offer Museo 1 at a much lower rate. So 300 and bucks, you get everything that's in there on that list on the what's included page. Yeah. So but not instruments, instruments. Right, yeah. let, let me say this really clearly. If you were a purchaser of the Museo Lifetime that happened during the summer, you will never give us any more money. You have everything that we ever build, everything that we ever produce, everything that is ever in Museo, no matter what model or what, whatever. You are a lifetime user, period, yeah. full stop. You, you are done giving us money. That's what Steve says all the time to that feedback. We get a lot of people who spent five hundred dollars. They they don't understand, and so they write in. They're like, "Hey, I'm a little upset that I paid five hundred dollars for this thing, and now just a few months later, you're offering it for two ninety nine. Like, what what the heck? What gives? Uh, that is not the case. The two ninety nine is Museo One. There is a limit to that collection. There's a limit to the content that's going in that collection. Museo Lifetime users are done giving us money. They will have access to everything always immediately. The end. Yep. All right. Hopefully uh, that answered your question, Mark. Yeah. Um, Peter Tomlinson, do you think you'll still release contact libraries? We had a good discussion. Go back and listen to that. But the short answer is probably not. Um, depends on feedback, but we haven't gotten any significant feedback looking for new contact libraries. Um, thank you for, I mean, such such great comments. on these. Thank you guys so much. Um, I can't speak enough for my team. I mean, obviously, Mike and I are here talking, but you know, I don't, I don't turn the wheels of this machine, you know, Maddie and Kirsten and Amanda and Santiago and Harrison and Toby and all mm -hmm. of our Colette and Andrew and Steve and I mean, Brian and Chris and Doug and all of these people, they just, they work so hard and they really care so much. So thank you guys. They make it awesome. Um, thanks PG. Appreciate you. But I think we answered pretty much all of it. I think that's good. Yeah, really, I think we're good. Hopefully what that... is. <laughs> and how yeah, you we just wanted to be it. super clear. Um, you know, it's like if we could shout from the, it's like, how do we get the word out? And we found maybe this is the best way just to do these live streams every once in a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. And could we ask you guys for help? If you really like what we're doing, could you like share about what Museo yeah. and, and maybe uh, share, you know, with your friends? Because uh, one of the things I think is really cool with Museo is you can collaborate with your friends. Yes. So and yeah. You know, and you just maybe have them try a, a free trial and just mess around and, and write yeah. some music together. Um, but, uh, you know, that... there, there's two things I want to say before we go. One is we got nominated for the best new plugin or yeah, it's it best, best virtual instrument of 2023. It's a plugin boutique for for plugin boutique. So if you guys want to vote uh, there, there will be there's a link on our 
Instagram, a link in bio on the Musio Instagram or the Cine Samples Instagram. Please go vote for Musio. And there's a lot of other categories with other really, really awesome companies and really awesome products. So go cast your vote, but make sure you click on uh, Musio and use all of the extra emails that you have for junk mail to give us extra votes as well. <laughs> uh, it would be huge for us to win that one. We're really excited and we think it deserves it. You know, we see all the hard work. So, uh, okay. And yes, uh, Ed, can we apply to become beta testers? Absolutely. We're always looking for good beta testers. Uh, right now, our team is a little saturated and there's some people who, you know, life has just changed and they're not able to give as much feedback as they have in the past. Uh, we always have stuff to test, but we're pretty finicky and pretty particular about our beta testers. They've got to be on top of things. They've got to be very well experienced and they really have to have the time to put the stuff through its paces. You know, we're talking about testing every legato transition. We're talking about checking tuning on vocal libraries. It's it's a big deal. So absolutely write us in, apply. Uh, we'll definitely give it a review. Um, but we're we're not really in need of a ton of new beta testers. But we yeah, also... no, if you're interested, I mean, being a beta tester is super cool because like, I mean, obviously I'm a beta tester, but you get a beta version of Musio and I have all this stuff in here Yeah, that's uh, that production doesn't have yet. And you can mess around and have it weeks before everyone else. But although we do require that people help us test. Yeah. Um, and if you want to see and... how, how, how poorly a piano can perform when I upload it without testing it properly, join the beta team. <laughs> you can give <laughs> yeah, yell at us, help us out. There's like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so we yeah, have, but actually, you know, and users can do the same thing. I think, I think, you know, our customers are also beta testers. Well, they're, they're, what do you call that? Um, they're just testers. So yeah, there's I mean, this feedback per instrument and, and the feedback is just so important to us. Yeah. We've included if you click it. the little, the little dial on your instrument in the rack, uh, submit feedback. If you notice anything, yeah. uh, uh, we don't catch a hundred percent of it. We, we don't, it's an, I don't think it's even possible, humanly possible. Yeah. So, if you find something, yeah, let us let know. Us know. Uh, will there be an iOS version of Musio? Obviously, don't want to say no to that, but we have no immediate plans to jump into that world. Um, iOS is still. We've seen other companies invest tens of millions of dollars into trying to get iOS off the ground, and there really just isn't a call for it. Um, with with the amount of tech available for music creation, iOS is really not exciting quite yet. There's some stuff in the future that looks promising, but I mean, I, I was at NAM shows, you know, 12 years ago where, where people are getting all psyched about iOS and you can create music on your iPad and it just hasn't happened yet. And we're, there's really no reason to try to get Musio into that space. Yeah. It comes down to how many people want it. Uh, yeah. as, as always, it's like, is it really, I mean, if it's only two people, then it's like, it might not be worth our time. Logic Pro is now on iOS. Yeah. And I haven't tried it yet, but from what I hear, it's it's pretty decent. So I don't know, maybe there's an indication that it might be in the future, but it, it's, I don't know. But I mean, the thing about this, it, it, as a concept, sure, but we're a company of like, what, 12 people, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, we're not going to try to, we're not going to try to bite off more than we can chew. I think we've done that before and have seen the results. We want to focus. This is why we stopped really fiddling with the context stuff, because Mike very correctly discerned. This is, we have to do one thing and we have to do it really, really well. If you want to kick ass and make a great product, then just focus on that one thing and put all of your effort and resources into it and try to get it to be the best it could possibly be. If we keep on splitting our focus and trying to juggle these things and provide everything for everyone, we're just kidding ourselves. We're not able to do that. So we're trying to do Musio as the app really well. Yeah. Um, just be into a machine, into a machine. <laughs> from your iPad. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. That's great. Uh, I think we've we've answered pretty much everything. We've gone an hour about here. I know we started a little late, but um, uh, hold on. Okay, different question. Do you think you'll end up selling Musio as a player, like a one-time purchase, and we can buy the library separately? Uh, we'd, we've talked a lot about that. Um, there are some pros to it and a lot of cons. Generally, we want Musio to be this inclusive, collaborative thing. We think that's really important. Um, we've seen the frustration and, again, the, the separation and the lack of access. Mm -hmm. if, if only people with a ton of money can afford to buy the best libraries, we're just going to miss out on a lot of musical genius that this industry has to offer and this community has to offer. So it's exciting for us to offer Musio full stop at $10 a month. That means the genius prodigy who's going to a community college in, you know, Simi Valley right now 
can have access to the best of the best samples get down and really make an incredible you know composition yeah fault. so i don't i don't like the idea of again going reverting really going back to the past i'm just going to say it i think that's the past of saying okay you you're into music fork over twenty five hundred dollars to get all the things that you need and have access to or just use the stock crap that comes with whatever daw we're, we're over that and yeah i don't I, think I that's learned, kind of mm -hmm. okay, let me just say this one last thing and then i'll i'll shut up but I, I learned this a long time ago i was working for this company called big fish audio and virtue instruments and um Previously, they were a company called Presonus, not Prosonus, but Presonus or opposite. I can't remember. But what they did was they sold sample racks for the big Synclavier uh, systems and keyboards that like Michael Jackson toured with. So if you ever, you know, heard those live recordings, th those were these massive racks that took like pallets to get them in. And you would shove this rack into the keyboard and it would have like 200 megabytes of samples or something like that. But those are the strings that they use. And those racks were like $25,000. You couldn't get them unless you were like a famous touring musician, right? And yeah. Tom, very in a, in a stroke of genius, was working for this company as a salesman. And he said, look, we're not going to sell these things for $25,000 anymore. We're going to put it on this little DVD, this new media, and we're going to sell it for $200. And his boss thought he was insane. But he's like, yeah, but we're not going to sell... 50 or 60 at 25,000, we're going to sell 50 or 60,000 at 200. We're going to sell 2 million of these DVDs and it's going to be great. And it gave access to what we do now. It's, it's people like Tom, it's people like Mike who were innovative and said, yeah, we're going to spend 150, $250,000 to record this orchestra. No one can do that, but we're going to sell it to enough people that we can bring that price down to access. And this is just the newest iteration of that. We've gone through the physical to the digital age, now digital to cloud age, and now we're just looking for access. You should be able as a student to afford great sounds and instruments. And yeah. that's what we're doing. We're not going to go and revert back and say, yeah, if you want one cello, it's going to be 250 bucks. Sorry. Yeah. Those are my thoughts. No, I think, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Agree with you should be. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And also like, by the, like, if you do the math, I mean, the perpetual we offer it obviously because people are, are asking for it. Um, but the, you know, I think that the focus and we'll always offer it, I think, um, from museum one, two, three, four, five, but a subscription, I mean, far more people choose a subscription, uh, because it's just cheaper and it's a lot of young creators, a lot, a lot of people that are getting started. Um, they really opt for that. And so there's some, there's just something to be said about paying, paying that for that. And if you do the math, like if you were to just fast forward, five years from now, I will tell you that the subscribers will end up paying less. Uh, it's very likely that they will end up paying less yeah. than the people who continue to pay for perpetual. But there's, there's a, I get it too. Like I, I like perpetual for a lot of things too. There's a psychological reason for it. It's like, I feel like I own it. I feel like it's mine. No one will, you know, I don't feel like I have to keep paying if I stop paying it. You know, it's just, it's mine. Uh, so that's why you want to offer it, but you will end up spending more over time. Um, yeah, for that peace of mind. So, you know, I mean, everyone's got to make the decision, do the math, and uh, you know, we're not going anywhere. I don't, I don't plan to go anywhere. We're gonna, we're here to, to serve everybody uh, for as long as possible. So, I think it really depends on who you are. Like, I know some people who have to save a ton of money because they get good jobs, but only for a couple months out of the year. And there are times where they're doing well and they want to buy something to own so that they don't have to worry about the access to that later when they need. Yeah. That. And other people who just have done the math, they're always going to have the money around or at least a, a trickle. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to save hundreds of dollars if I just subscribe and get everything brand new. So you just got to make a decision for yourself. There's no better way. There's no best way for, for one size fits all. Uh, we yeah. just try to give all the options for everyone in our community to win. Options. Cool. Should we call it? I think we, yeah, it's been an hour. We started 10 minutes late, so we're good. Yeah. Uh, Awesome. Yeah. Thank you everybody for your time. Uh, yeah, thanks guys. We'll do, we'll do another one. Have a good, if you're American, have a good Thanksgiving um, holiday season. We'll, I think maybe we'll do one more before the end of the year. I don't know. That'd we'll see. Uh, good. Thank you, Shane, for, for uh, putting this together. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the lightness and the scramble. <laughs> we did our best. Awesome. All right. Have All a right, good day.